This is Give a Book, Give a Voice, and today we're reading The Key to Extraordinary by Natalie Lloyd. Chapter 1. It is a known fact that the most extraordinary moments in a person's life come disguised as ordinary days. It is a known fact for me, at least, because that morning started out mostly the same as all the mornings before. I woke up with an ache in my chest, the smell of chocolate, and the sound of a ghost making the racket in the kitchen. Now, I am not the sort to dwell on doom and sorrow. Life is too short for that, but I should at least try to describe the ache briefly. It is not the kind that comes after eating tacos too late at night. It is the kind that comes from being left behind. I think my heart knows I should be filling it with new memories, new jokes, and wondrous adventures with the one person I love most of all, but that person is gone now, and so my heart has a giant hole in it. I call it the big empty. I squeezed my eyes shut and reminded myself of those affirmations. Tonight, you could have your destiny dream. Never doubt your starry aim. I repeat, I repeated those words while I tugged my mud, mud boots over my jeans and again when I zipped up my favorite hoodie. Early summer had settled in the mountains, but the air was still chilly first thing in the morning. I didn't feel cold, though. I felt energized. Just the prospect of my destiny dream rattled my brain to such a degree that I fixed my sideways braid on the wrong side of my head. I'm not superstitious about most things, but I knew the day would go badly if I wore my braid on the wrong side. Finally, I snatched up my messenger bag and zoomed down the stairs to see what the ghost was up to. Since there's no sense in scaring the ghost, who might whirl around and scare me in turn, I decided to declare myself. It's Emma, I called out as I stepped into the darkness of the Boneyard Cafe. My family's bakery, the Boneyard Cafe, which takes up the whole bottom floor of our house, which is perched on the edge of a famous cemetery, hence the cafe's creeptastical name. Currently, Grammy Granny Blue is doing her best to keep the Boneyard running, as business hasn't been too great lately. I'm back here, yelled a voice that unfortunately belonged to my brother, Topher and not one of the dearly departed. I never actually seen a ghost in my kitchen. I always only heard it banging around. But due to my home's location, I'm f I figure I'm bound to run into a ghost eventually. The air was thick with the smell of chocolates as I walked into the kitchen. The cocoa cauldron was already bubbling near the far window. It was Topher's week to make Boneyard Brew, our cafe's most famous treat. As I near I can describe it. Boneyard brew is like hot chocolate with a heavenly twist. Maybe it seems crazy to drink hot chocolate in the summer, but I'm here to tell you. Once you've had a taste of boneyard brew, you'll never stop craving it. Topher even makes homemade marshmallows. The marshmallow man himself was perched on the tip top of a tall ladder, digging through one of the supply cabinets like a scrawny snack bandit. Hungry, I asked him. Thump. Topher bumped his head in the cabinet, and let out a low groan. He got all squ squinty-eyed as he hunkered down to look at me, but I could see the start of a smile on his face. I'm a pearl Casey. I thought you might be a ghost. I yelled and declared myself. I know, Topher gave me the same dimple-cheeked grin that, most, that made most of the girls at Blackbird Hollow Community College go googly-eyed. I always get skittish when I'm down here before daylight. It is early for you to be baking, brew. I agreed. In my nearly 12 years of existence, we never opened before 10 a.m. on Sundays. I can't get this recipe out of my head, Topher said by way of explanation. Peach lavender muffins. I won't have any peace of mind until I make them. And then I thought I'd get the brew going while I w was down here. I'm glad you're making extra. I usually have a big tour group in the graveyard on s Sunday. Topher cocked his head and slided my face. Are you okay? You look troubled. I gave him a thumbs up. All good. Huh. He didn't look convinced, but he reached into the back cabinet and dis dislodged one of the giant silver muffin pans. He twisted out of the way as it clattered onto the floor. Easy, I said as I jumped to hand it to him. If you make any more noise down here, you'll be... You'll... What? Wake the dead? You and Blue play music so loud, the dead can't get any sleep around here anyway. I was going to say wake my dog, but that's a fair point about the loud music. Topher stretched tall again and got back to digging. 
He tossed a sack of Blue's organic flour down on the countertop before he dismounted the rickety ladder. I could tell by the, the tune he was whistling that Topher was about to go into a serious baking frenzy. He already tied his red bandana securely around his head. That was a direct order from Granny Blue. Topher likes to let his hair go long, so Blue makes him pull his hair back when he bakes. I felt a soft thump, thump, thump against my boot and looked down to see Bear Claw yawning up at me. I scooped her up into my arms and hugged her against my chest. When Topher took my me to the animal shelter to pick out the pup, the lady said, the, the lady said we didn't want that dog because she was scrawny. But I knew from the first time I saw that dog, she was meant to be mine. I hope every person in the world gets to experience, have an experience so wondrous. The sweet tug of your heart when you look at a dog, and a dog looks at you, and you know you're meant to take care of each other. Topher and I thought we made, I made a fine choice in picking that dog, but we both decided she needed a bolder name, something that help her that help her see herself in a new way. So I named her the toughest word I could think of, Bear Claw. I call her Bear for short. That day, Bear leaped into my arms as soon as I called her name, as if she'd been waiting her whole life for someone to see her true potential. Good morning, my fearless little fuzz monster. I whispered against her floppy ear. Bear nuzzled happily against my neck. Is Granny Blue still sleeping, I asked. I don't think she sleeps much anymore. Topher stirred the big spoon through the boneyard brew. She nodded towards her office. The door was closed, but a glow of yellow light sleeped, seeped into the hallway. Her light was still on when, he, when I went to bed. I wouldn't be surprised if she stayed awake all night. Most of Blackbird Hollow was having the tough time making ends meet, and this cafe was no different. I cuddled Bear close, but stayed in the doorway. Granny's rule is that Bear can't go into the kitchen. As she says, some people are particular about dog fur and their biscuits. Telfer opened a tiny jar full of dry lavender. He tapped, tapped, tapped out a teaspoon's worth into a tiny sugar pill, sugar-filled pestle. Flower dust already graced his cheekbones, neck, and hands, as if some angel had reached down out of the clouds to trace my brother's features like, see, now this is what a perfect human looks like. We are not anything alike in that aspect, my brother and me. We would ma It would make way more sense if Topher was supposed to have a destiny dream, but he wasn't. The destiny dream was, would be happening to me, and soon, I hoped. Emma, Topher studied me carefully. I could see something ro something's wrong. You might as well tell me. My brother can read people like a story. He knows when a smile is covering sadness and a sparkle... Which sparkly eyed look is a sure sign of a secret? He can hear a broken heart in the sound of someone's voice. He is especially good at reading me. The floors creaked under Topher's sneakers as he came to stand in front of me, like he was putting himself between me and the world, as if whatever was breaking my heart would have to get past him to get to me. It's the big empty, I whispered, cuddling bare tightly against the infernal ache in my chest. I woke up thinking I wanted to talk to Mama. Then I realized I couldn't talk to her, and I shrugged. It aches, is all. Missing her is a terrible ache. Topher reached out to hug me, but I spun around and headed for the back door. I'm fine, Toph. No need to start the day all morbid and sad, anyway. I'm off to see the long-ago dearly departed. I make my way through the kitchen door and onto the back porch. The screen door slapped shut behind me, and I had started out over the dreamy morning world. The dark night had already faded to a pretty pale blue on the horizon. The cool wind pricked my skin and rustled the branches of the big oak in the center of the field. It was a life sound the wind would make, a pretty rasp and then shh, which was kind of strange considering that all that lay before me. As far as I could see, the headstones and statues of Blackbird Hollow Cemetery peeked up in the mist. I plucked a white daisy from the grass, stuck it in my braid, and set out to walk amongst those graves, just the same as always. I only walk in the daylight, though. Everybody in town knows that you never step foot in Blackbird Hall Cemetery at night. Most people are too scared of brain to go there during the day as well, but I'm not afraid. 
Not exactly. Okay, here's the honest truth. Sometimes I do feel like someone's, something is following me around the graveyard. At times, that feeling comforts me. It's like I'm being watched over. But every now and then, I get a certain chill and feel more like I'm being flat out watched. I was right about both things, but I didn't know it yet. This was The Key to Extraordinary by Natalie Lloyd.